NVIDIA's stock dropped 4% in a single day last week. Why? Because Meta, one of their biggest customers, is reportedly about to spend billions of dollars on Google's chips instead. So think about that. Meta is looking at spending 70 to $72 billion on AI infrastructure next year, and they're shopping around, and they're not alone. Anthropic just signed up for 1 million Google TPUs. That's not a typo. A million chips. Meanwhile, Google's latest Ironwood TPU can... can can connect 9,216 chips into a single pod. NVIDIA Blackwell's, it can only connect 72. That's 128 times more processing power working together in a single system. So is Google's custom silicon about to dethrone the king of AI chips? Let's break this down today and talk about this because there's a ton going on about TPU versus GPU. Welcome to Startup Hack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Hack, we love to build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, look, I've been watching the chip industry for decades, and what's happening right now is historic. If you don't believe me, my very first laptop said Pentium, and, or uh, it said uh, Intel inside and had a Pentium chip, right? Like, we're talking about a long time. The company that basically has a monopoly on AI chips, NVIDIA, owns somewhere between 80 to 95% of the market, depending on who you ask, is suddenly watching its biggest customers build their own competing products. So Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, they're all designing custom silicon. And the reason is simple. NVIDIA's chips cost $40,000 each, and these companies are spending tens of billions of dollars a year on them. At some point, building your own becomes the smarter play. And by the way, if you're in the chip industry or working with AI infrastructures, drop a comment down below. I love to hear from you guys. Generally, my favorite thing is to read your guys' comments, and it's the best compliment you can give me. So leave a comment down below. Now, let's dive into some of these articles and talk about this a little bit. But before I do, I want to talk a little about Google's new Ironwood TPU, the TPU V7. And it delivers 4.6 petaflops of FP8 performance per chip. Now, NVIDIA's B200 Blackwell delivers 4.5 petaflops. That's essentially a statistical tie. So both chips have 102, uh, 102 gigabytes of HB RAM uh, of memory, so they're matched there too. But NVIDIA has a slight edge in memory bandwidth, 8 ter terabytes per second versus Google's 7.4 terabytes, and so it's close. But for the first time ever, Google isn't playing catch-up on raw specs. They're competing head-to-head. -head. So Chris Miller, author of Chip War, says that some expert thinks TPUs are more technically on par uh, or superior to NVIDIA's GPUs. Now here's where it gets crazy. NVIDIA's NVLink can connect 72 GPUs into a single compute domain. Google's Ironwood connects up to 9,216 chips into a single pod. That's 128 times more. For training massive AI models with hundreds of billions of parameters, this scale changes everything. Google uses optical circuit switches to network these massive clusters with low latency and tight synchronization. NVIDIA has nothing that rivals this scale in their standard product lineup. One Hacker News commenter put it bluntly, Google's optical switching makes a rack scale NVIDIA system look like a joke. Now, let's jump into some of these articles here and take a look here. So Google's TPU revolution, the $13 billion challenge to NVIDIA's AI chip dominance. The AI chip market has experienced a seismic shift. Morgan Stanley just released a bombshell forecast. Google's TPUs production could reach 7 million units by 2028, potentially injecting $13 billion in new revenue and adding 40 cents per earnings per share. But this isn't just a story about Google's growth. It's about a fundamental challenge to NVIDIA's seemingly unshakable dominance in the AI chip market, and NVIDIA's stock is already feeling the pressure. So you can see that for 2027, it's a projected 5 million TPUs, and, and 2028, 7 million TPUs. And so the revenue impact is $13 billion increase, uh, an additional 40 cents per share. Now, what are TPUs and why do they matter? To understand this forecast so significantly, we need to understand what tensor processor units actually are and how do they differ from GPUs. Well, NVIDIA's GPUs, or graphics processing units, were originally designed for rendering graphics and later adapted for AI workloads. Google's TPUs were purpose built from the ground up for machine learning. Think of it this way. GPUs are a Swiss army knife. Versatile, powerful, can handle many different tasks. TPUs, specialized scalpels, designed specifically for one thing, AI and ML, and exceptionally efficient at it. Now, perhaps the most compelling aspect of Google's TPU is the price point. The TPUs are approximately two times cheaper than NVIDIA's GPUs at a standard 9,000 chip scale. 
This cost advantage is massive when companies are deploying thousands or millions of chips for AI training or and inference. For example, for enterprise watching their AI infrastructure budget balloon, this 50% cost reduction is impossible to ignore. Now, what the other part of this that really is hitting them is that it, it looks like these TPUs are twice as, uh, as efficient at running than the GPUs. So Google's TPU is two times the cost advantage purpose built for AI. Um, and it goes through and breaks down all of these because Amazon's Trinium or Inferentia are their AWS optimized chips. Microsoft's Mia, custom AI accelerators for Azure and workloads. AMD's MI300 is direct GPU competitor with aggressive pricing. So they're not doing the massive margins that NVIDIA is. And then there's a lot of other startup challengers like Cerebrus, Grok. This is a different Grok, by the way. Uh, Samba Nova and other novel architectures. So. NVIDIA still has a, a very strong upper hand because the CUDA software mode. This is one of the biggest ones. Most of the training systems are designed to work against CUDA. There's also training dominance. While Google's TPUs excel at inference running training models, NVIDIA still dominates the training market where companies build and fine tune AI models. So this is a really good article. Um, but we see G in NVIDIA Google uh, AI chip rivalry escalates on reports on meta talks. So we talked a little bit about this, but a deal would signal a growing momentum for Google's chips and a long term potential to challenge NVIDIA's market dominance after the company earlier agreed to supply up to 1 million chips to Anthropic. Now from Tom's Hardware. Google's TPUs garner attention as AI chips alternative, but only a minor threat to NVIDIA dominance. Alphabet's biggest challenge is a widespread adoption. So Meta Report deal with Google shows a growing interest in alternative AI hardware, but NVIDIA says its platforms remain unmatched. Now this goes back to the point that NVIDIA is the Swiss Army knife, so they're feeling confident in that position. Now, from Yahoo, Amazon releases a new AI chip amid industry push to challenge NVIDIA's dominance. So see, everybody's coming at NVIDIA now. They're getting it from every angle. NVIDIA stock fall 4% on report that Meta will use AI Google chips, right? The information, uh, information report reported that Meta is considering using Google's tensor processor units or TPUs in data centers in 2027. So it's not like this is tomorrow. Shares of NVIDIA were 4% lower. Companies building AI infrastructure uh, have been searching for a more diversified chip, right? Now, TPU 7, Google takes a swing at the king. Potential end of CUDA mode, Anthropic 1 gig, uh, gigawatt purchase, TPU purchase. And so this guy goes on to talk about some of these, and let me get to some of these points that he's talking about. So NVIDIA came back and was like, we're delighted by Google's success. We've made great adv advances in AI and continue to supply to Google. Right, they had to throw that in there that their Google still actually buys from them. NVIDIA is a generation ahead of the industry. It's the only platform that runs on every AI model and does it everywhere computing is done. NVIDIA offers uh, greater performance, versatility, and fungibility than ASICs, which are designed for specific AI frameworks and functions. So you can see that you know we're starting to see the TPU expose infrastructure, right? We're seeing this graph where TPUs are starting to really take off, right? And so we're seeing the other uh, Tranium, TPU, and NVIDIA and what their exposure looks like, right? Um, so lots, lots of different articles, clearly tons of talk about this, right? Google's Ironwood TPUs represent a bigger threat than NVIDIA would have you believe. And I'm agreement with here. It says, look out, Jensen. With the TPUs, Google has shown time and time again that it's not the size of your accelerators that matters, but how efficiently you can scale them into production. Uh, now, with the latest generation of Ironwood accelerators slated for the general availability in the coming weeks, the chocolate factory not only has scale on its side, but a tensor processing unit with a grunt to give NVIDIA's Blackwell behemoths. First announced in April alongside with a com uh, comically bad comparison to the El Capitan supercomputer, no, an Ironwood TPU pod is not 24 times faster than the Department of Energy's best, biggest iron. Google's TPU V7 accelerators are a major leap in performance over prior generations. Now, historically, Google's TPUs have paled in comparison to contemporary GPUs from the likes of NVIDIA and more recently AMD in terms of raw flop memory. But that's starting to really differ now, right? We're starting to really see that come up. With TPU 7, Google's accelerators offer performance within spitting distance of NVIDIA's Blackwells while normalizing floating point performance to the same precision. So we're seeing that, you know, when it comes down to head to head on these, that Google is just slightly behind, but much cheaper at it, which is, you know, one of the big things. Now, Google's Gemini Deep Research can look into your emails. I'm not really sure why this article is in the list of my articles, but. We all run raw here, right? Now, Google Boss's trillion dollar AI investment boom has elements of irrationality. 
And we're seeing that level of irrationality. I'm actually not sure how these two articles got into this list here, but it will make for a good counter. So as uh, Sundar Panchai was talking about, we're seeing different levels of irrationality, right? In, in the AI boom. And you know that's part of what we're seeing here is because even NVIDIA is really just concerned that with AI, uh, with Google coming after them, right? And according to different reports, Google's total cost of ownership per Ironwood chip is about 44% lower than a GB200 server. TPUs deliver roughly four times better performance per dollar than NVIDIA's H100s for inference workloads. When you're deploying thousands or millions of chips, that 50% cost reduction is impossible to ignore. NVIDIA charges premium margins, not just on GPUs, but on the entire system. CPUs, switches, NICs, cables, connectors. Google only pays Broadcom's margins on the silicon, which is significant, but nowhere near NVIDIA's stack. Analysts are warning that if Google forces a price war, it would crater NVIDIA's stock even if they maintain volume. Now, training AI models is one thing, but inference, actually running these models for users, is where the compute, real compute goes. By 2030, inference is expected to consume 75% of all AI compute, dwarfing training. Google designed Ironwood sp uh, specifically for this age of inference. It's optimized for real-time response at scale. TPUs, TPUs use systolic arrays that stream data efficiently without constant memory fetches, slashing latency and energy use. Google claims Ironwood delivers two times the performance per watt compared to its predecessor. So every single query that your AI serves costs money, and at billions of queries daily, a two times efficiency improvement is massive. Now, Anthropic signed up for one million of Google's TPUs. Meta signing up, but even with Anthropic signing up for the largest known TPU deal with an external customer, but Meta is also in the wings with advanced talks to try to deploy Google's TPUs in their data center starting in 2027. So when the information reports that Meta talks, Nvidia stock immediately dropped. Even Amazon's custom Tranium chips are seeing significantly risen demand from customers like Anthropic. JP Morgan predicts that custom chips will control 45% of the AI market by 2028, up from 37% in 2024. All of that is right at a hit to NVIDIA. And this is the biggest cloud provider now view custom silicon as insurance against NVIDIA's monopoly pricing. See, that's the problem. NVIDIA has been greedy and they're charging massive margins. Google's latest state-of-the-art AI model, Gemini 3, was trained on TPUs, not a single NVIDIA GPU. That is proof that TPUs can handle frontier model training at the highest level. Anthropic chose Google's TPUs for training Claude specifically because of proven reliability and scale. When you're spending $100 million on compute, it just works, and it beats 5% faster on paper. So Google owns the entire stack from chip to data center to cooling systems. They can optimize everything together. This vertical integration is the same playbook that make, made Apple's M-series chips dominant in their market. So NVIDIA's response tells you that they're worried. NVIDIA issued a public statement after the meta news. Quote, we're delighted by Google's success. And I read part of this for you, right? NVIDIA is a generation ahead of the industry, right? There's a lot of things written between the lines. When you have to publicly defend your position against a customer's internal project, that's not a power move. Jensen Wang has been texting uh, folks from Google, DeepMind, to reassure himself that scaling laws are intact. NVIDIA's CEO previously dismissed the custom chips by saying customers would prefer GPUs even if alternatives were free. Now, I think that's a little arrogance, and that arrogance is looking less justifiable every quarter as custom silicon continues to gain traction. So in my 25 years of software development, I've learned that dismissing competition is usually the first side of the trouble. Now, NVIDIA's CUDA software ecosystem is a big moat. Thousands of engineers worldwide optimize for it. Every major AI framework supports NVIDIA's GPUs first, other hardware second. But choosing NVIDIA also means a lock-in. Your model's code and workflow becomes NVIDIA-dependent. Uh, Google's JAX and TensorFlow frameworks are, are specifically optimized for TPUs. The real question is, which lock-in is more acceptable? And increasingly, companies want options. Now, Meta alone is projecting 70 to $72 billion in capital expenditure in a for AI infrastructure in 2025. Google, Amazon, and Microsoft are spending similar amounts. So we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars combined. At that scale, even a 30% cost savings from custom chips equals tens of billions of dollars in savings. So these companies are essentially funding their own chip development with NVIDIA's pricing. So GPUs are the Swiss Army knife. They can do graphics, gaming, scientific computing, and AI. TPUs are the scalpels, increasingly efficient at AI, but can't do much else. But right now, that's the biggest need. So NVIDIA's Grace Blackwell Architectural 
couples GPUs with CPUs for unified memory access. So for 99% of the companies that aren't hyperscalers, NVIDIA remains the practical choice. But for those uh, biggest 10 or 20 that are doing it, this can be a huge difference. Now, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Do you think that the TPU thing is overblown? Do you think we're going to see more about this in the market? What are your guys' thoughts? Leave your comments down below. It's the best compliment you can give me is to leave a comment because I read them all. Here at Startup Hack, we love to build custom software solutions for companies. So reach out if we can help you, especially if you're looking to have systems connected. That's our specialty. And so check out startuphack.com and here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting-edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI-powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems. It positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI-powered. Reach out today, and we can help you. Check out startuphack.com 